So since it's lucky baskar, mm -hmm. so I want to test luck first. Ah, this dumb luck I don't have. Ah, you dumb luck you don't. Have. I'm generally fortunate and blessed, you know, but like, uh, ah, but like, okay, finding like a dollar, no, I won't. No, you don't. That's no. not your vibe. Let's see, Minakshi. Okay, what do I do with yes, this? Let's see if you can aim and throw in, oh in the cup. Oh God, why do we always hey, Minakshi end up playing? The cup. Yeah, so, so let's. Is it how many she? Do we get like three over. chances? No, I'll just cut and put the ones that work. <laughs> <laughs> I I love this game. <laughs> See? Oops. That, that's cut. Okay. She got three already. She got three already. Four. So there you go. Lucky Baskar will be a hit in five languages. Woohoo! <laughs> that's how luck goes. <laughs> so first, Lucky Baskar. Before I start, Macha. Macha, you're the retro king of India. Mm -hmm. How are you always in a period? Why do all period cinemas come to you first? I've actually begun to now fear uh, directors thinking that if you don't bring something period to DQ, like he might not say yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, is it period? Let's take it to him. Um, I feel like how much do I fight these things? Like mm -hmm. I, I, I was trying to fight love stories. Uh, I, I try to fight retro period films. Uh -huh. But eventually, if there is something really authentic and, and, and beautiful in that story, I can't be like, I don't want to do this because, because it's, it's period. Because it's period, mm -hmm. because it's a love story. End of the day, we're here to tell great stories. Right? And then that, that's what I love most about cinema. Like, I want to tell the most beautiful stories. So, if, uh, if, I, if I'm meant to be uh, period in, for, for most of my career, and uh, if I have to have some filmography with the record of most number of period films, so be it. I think you already do, just say. I think already I do, yeah. 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 So what do you think? Have you you've seen him in other period stuff? Doesn't he look like he walks out of a period, his hair, <laughs> the way he looks, it's just perfect. He's like hair. A, you he's, should be he's, saying he's, this. <laughs> you should be saying he's, this. He's, I think As to why I'm looking like this is, is also <laughs> partly because of him. No, but honestly, I think he's like a cardboard cutout, right? Like how they say, these are the ingredients we need in a in a character that should look like this, should that should be like this, should, that should like just like fit the thing. He fits it all. And I and I think I now understand like working with him on this film and like seeing footage and whatever we you know the scenes we do together. I feel like it's just so easy for him to glide into any character that it is. And I think I think he's blessed to just be able to fit into that retro vibe because it's not everybody's cup of tea. I've also understood that not everybody can suit into that. And he's just blessed with that modern space he's blessed with that retro space and i think very few have that and and i think he's one of those so, so before getting into your film i have to like i'm usually the Thank most you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> i, I, I took all these compliments i'm sitting there like just, just, just soaking facts. it in <laughs> so usually in life i'm like the most secure human being mm -hmm. but the only thing i'm insecure about is hair mm -hmm. okay and you have a good head of hair you know this is a fixed set head of hair <laughs> <laughs> i love the honesty <laughs> But when I see him, like usually when like women take a long time to get hair, like I saw him getting his hair done once, I was like, Macha, how do you have so much hair? <laughs> and you're uh, older than I am in some strange yeah. way. I am, yeah. Huh? It's but just a Malayali just, thing. Is it like it's in a Malayali Kerala thing? you have like, I don't know, I've seen all the people who are from Kerala have amazing hair. It's in the coconuts, Macha. Then. I Possibly. think it's, huh? it's just that, Possibly right? Possibly the oil. <laughs> so tell me, how, how, how did Lucky Baskar start? What did, how, with you? How did Winky land up, speak to you? Uh, What's the I, I day zero? I think uh, how it all just panned out together in this one space was, uh, the, I think it was Venki's call to kind of think, I was I was in the sort of list of like, you know, they say the short lists of things, of, of people who might fit the role of Sumati when they were looking in for that. And um, I did a look test and I didn't hear back from them for a month. And I was just like giving up thinking, I think this is not happening, so let me just move on with my life. And it just took that long for them to take that call. I don't know how it happened. So then suddenly, this one day, out of nowhere, I think it was after a month, I get a call from Venki and I'm in Bombay and I'm sitting and he's like, uh, hi, I uh, just wanted to tell you, uh, congratulations, welcome on board. I was like, uh, he Which Venki is this? Yeah, like, uh, he just started <laughs> the conversation on that morning. Like, congratulating I was just thinking, what is he saying? Like, what is what is he talking about? So it took me like a minute to kind of just understand what was happening. And I was like, oh, you mean Lucky Bhaskar? I was like, yeah, uh, just, just wanted to let you know that uh, you're on board. I was like, 
oh okay <laughs> that's literally how it happened and then the next thing i know we are here doing the puja starting the film in the next week and it just started off like that so yeah. but you know in full sort of praise to her the fact that uh, lucky mark is what your fourth film fifth film in yeah, telugu yes yeah so and starting out and the first thing uh, in the film like a, a big part of the film is is there in the trailer is there in is that we are playing a married couple with a child and and the child is 6 7 years old and there is no way that we actually is old enough to even have a child of that age unless you uh, <laughs> but the fact that she had no qualms about that i thought it was so like just refreshing you know yeah today it's hard to say you don't want a kid you want pia no as in <clears throat> even, even even me for that matter like, i think i started to play dad after i became a dad That's you know, interesting. Yeah. Till then, I was like, okay, maybe I, 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 I was pushing that that little twenty-something-year-old um, or like uh, not college, but like single mm. guy mm. role to a to to an extent. Uh, but once once my daughter was born, I was like, okay, now you know it's legit. Like it's I, legit. Yeah. Like everybody can believe it. Uh, so, and I, no, you know, I don't want to take it away from anybody who's everybody wants to. create whatever image they have mm. uh, or they hold on to it and and because I, i i feel like i did the same i love the fact that she believed in 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 the idea of the film and uh, she loved the character of sumati and and she was like so what uh, when she was like you know the, the, but you're playing a mom and there's there's, there's a child and I, i i feel like that's exactly what you said right you yeah. said so yeah. what and uh, there is not a single sequence in this film where i see uh, meena she plays sumati with Ritwik as 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 a son as Karthik there's only sequence of them together they kind of enter together or they're interacting together or they're there in the house and it feels so organic and it feels so real and i saw her putting in the effort to bond with him so yeah that 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 takes a lot thank you <laughs> and so this is your you you had you played dad before yeah you, i have yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and this is your oldest kid in that sense no no i've had i've had older kids you had older yeah, kids yeah. wow yeah. <laughs> clearly this is your first this time playing mom first, yeah, first yeah. time playing mom so Okay, now okay. I had a very funny thing because Adu says she was my son first in oh, Bahubali. Yeah. So <laughs> straight, straight. It was like <laughs> that's what I got there first. But you know, historically they've all done that. Like uh, I feel like dads played father to Mohan Lal sir. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow, I I, I feel like that 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 generation of actors came from a school of almost like theatre, right? Mm. You play all kinds of roles. You play you you roles. You mm. play. You, you can play a woman. You can play uh, an eight, a seventy, eighty-year-old man. You can play uh, a teenager. You can play anything, and 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 that's the challenge. Yeah. See, like Venki is somebody in Telugu we know for extreme detailing of characters. Right. Like, uh, okay, not to uh, this is like I'll sound like a cliche Telugu guy, but usually in Telugu there's a largeness to commercial cinema, sure. mm -hmm. and that's the beat of cinema that is mostly accepted. But there's a handful of filmmakers that. Make a commercial film. Also have art house sensibilities where detailing of characters is perfect. You see production design on the film; it's yeah. perfect. You don't see anything that's off character. And Venki is one such. And earlier you spoke about the production design of the film and how much of detail it was. So, what are the finicky things of Venki, and how does he start? I, I think this I relate to huh? completely. Okay. I've always felt uh, you can tell very. Uh, believable real logic based stories uh, and and believable characters which uh, it's almost like considered art house in, in uh, a lot of in, mainstream, <laughs> mainstream cinema yeah, yeah. Uh, when you go into that level of detailing of of real life mm -hmm. uh, a portrayal of real life uh, but at the same time i feel like you can make that commercial uh, you can tell it uh, not a larger than life way but you can mount it in a certain way where there is scale there is entertainment there is Uh, I'm saying extraordinary things can happen to ordinary people, yeah. uh, and I feel this film is so much of that. So much of extraordinary things happening to this one ordinary common man, man ordinary yeah. man and his family, yeah. Right? Yeah. ordinary people in that sense. Uh, but I think the, I think the genius of Venki, I'm glad he's not here, <laughs> <laughs> so I can praise him, uh, is that he seems to get the pulse of of the people in this film. and and there is a there's a whole variety of characters there's a whole spectrum of characters and it's not like everybody speaks venki's voice mm. it's not yeah. that everybody speaks his language uh there is enough detailing where each person seems their own uh, if somebody is of authority then they are of authority if if somebody is is uh, of a 
somebody who's failed his 10th grade and he will obviously speak that kind of a language. Uh, and I love that Venki is able to uh, write those. There's, there'll be days that I'm fighting with him about some uh, random thing and then, I, and then he'll give me the scene and I'll read it and I'll be like, oh, I can't fight with you because uh-huh. you, this scene is so good. You, you can still write this. Mm. Like, I mean, your, your views on life or something I might argue with or debate with you on. But like when you give me a scene, uh, I feel like it is so organic and it's so real. In fact, the biggest fights I've had with Venki uh, on the film is post shoot uh, is an edit huh. because he obviously has a time limitation uh, and a runtime limitation in his head. Right. And I'm I'm like, how can you take the scene away? It's so beautiful. It's mm. so real. It's huh. so organic. Uh, and you know, like, isn't it isn't it hurting you to like trim this and 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 sort of lose the essence of it or something? And and he's like, no, sir. I, ha- I have a larger story to tell, mm. and I can't really pick and choose. So I, I want everything to be there, but like, this is the best. This way how to get yeah, it. and. But it's been such a long time since I fought uh, with a director to lengthen a film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always fighting to, to reduce. reduce. Yeah. Like, this is almost three hours. Bring it down. Uh-huh. Cut 10 minutes. Cut 15 minutes. And that is, I think, as producers, yeah, we yeah, have that, you have that sense in our so. head, right? And this, but this is the first film where I'm like, I think it can afford another five minutes. Mm-hmm. You can give it another 10 minutes. Let the film breathe. It, ha- it, it, it can afford it because it's, it's so organic. So, like, Vinky, every time I see him, he's like this quiet, coy guy but he's got very different views on life yeah. and the way characters should be yeah. and you won't expect that's coming out of somebody who's set in that tone or that tonality of speaking. Sure. How is he as a director? Like how does he direct people? How clear is he? I think that's, I don't know how he does it. No. He's the exact opposite of what he writes. <laughs> he's like the exact opposite of what he writes? The is majority that what in his writing <laughs> so you're saying so, <laughs> so I mean I'm 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 awestruck sometimes uh, as to how he explains the character should be. Um, when in real life he's just talking about model cars and I'm like sitting there. I'm, he's how talking about he model cars. Yeah, I'm not kidding. That, like, literally, ask I don't him. know. If I, I had that influence on him <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, model cars. Hundred percent. This guy would have said something. Something. And I, and it just, it, it, it just it, takes it, off, and I'm yeah. just thinking. I, can't I, I created a guy. monster, so he's. Yeah. That's what he talks about. That's really? all he talks about. A lot. And so, and then Minash is like, but we have shoot, we have, and then she just sits there in the background. But he has this childlike energy about he anything does. that's yes, new. He, does. he gets excited with, okay, I'm sure this car wouldn't have been in his head. I mean, he had, I think he, he, he had a collection of some cars from his childhood. Uh-huh. Like, I yeah. think he really got into it. Sure. With I think when he like came you. to narrate to me, he saw, uh-huh. he saw <laughs> my collection in my house or something. But, but it went berserk during the, during this film. It's, it's it's crazy. But also, what's beautiful is that um, he's so talented, and I have uh, the, the very few directors who really portray women in the most authentic, organic, and beautiful way. And I think Venki is one of those. That's awesome. I That's was nice. I was so um, apprehensive initially because I was like, uh, is, he's like, I don't want layers of makeup on you. I don't want you to even look like you have makeup on you in your in the house and all the house scenes. And I was like, I don't know if it, he's like, just just trust me on this. Don't. It looks so beautiful. It, it does. looks so real. Whatever you see, yeah. I, I I don't think we've ever seen Mirakshi like this. Yeah. And oh no doubt. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure we'll see so. it different shades of you, different so far, characters. But, but yeah, like, I don't so know if we'll ever see yeah. a Sumati. Yeah. Because yeah. A Sumati lives in a certain era, in a certain time. So I, I, I think it's the most authentic uh, version of me so far that I've played in any character and I was actually very scared because this is getting too real <laughs> and I was not sure if it's uh, how it's going to be but I think uh, he, he just, when I saw it and I was like, he just knows what he's doing, he's so but good. There's not a it. single scene that, I, that, that we get, uh, mm-hmm. like when we get the sides, we're prepping for it or reading it, that, that you cannot believe fully. Yeah. Like yeah. we are performing with full conviction because it, it feels like a life lived. True. So I know a little bit about him. Every time he gets a role, he somewhere lives that a little bit, mm-hmm. and a part of that role becomes him. Mm-hmm. Like during the period of that film, yeah. like, and it happened over time. Like I've seen him during Kota. There is a certain aggression in the human body, in the body itself. <laughs> I've seen him through Lucky Basker. I've seen him now with Kanta. Yeah. In some ways, like, yeah. what is it with you? Does a part of that character stick with you, or am I am I right or wrong first? I mm-hmm. guess it's always there playing in the back of your head uh-huh. like, and, and if I think if you're on a certain look or your certain hair or beard or whatever like, I think That I mean, energy of that person sticks there, with you yeah. Yeah. How about you? Does, did some parts of Sumati continue being with you? No, absolutely the major part of uh, Sumati being that she's a mother That's something that I obviously don't have any yeah. uh, real life experience with So uh, I, I really had to kind of uh, dig deep into that aspect of my character that I was playing but apart from that, I think um, I'm, I'm a complete director's actor. 
so i give into the process of what he wants me to do and uh, how he wants me to be because he has the whole you know the, the whole movie in his head he knows what's happening i probably don't know how i you know would see that so and also we don't shoot in a linear way so i don't know yeah. what's happened in that so i think i trust him fully with the ways like you know what i think she's going to be in this space now so i don't think too much but sorry to interject but did you think you would have heard like your mom or like the, um, the mothers in your family in some, some yeah form. so just the mother bit was something that i knew that i had to uh, kind of work on a bit and literally the only example that you would be having is your close ones that you've seen around you which is my mother uh, but apart from that i don't think like for other characters there's not too much of like homework yeah. I, i would say i, 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 I feel like every time you you came because i mean this film we shot yeah. over <laughs> over a year so yeah. you shot shot over a year over a oh year oh my god That's yeah great. like but, i mean not entirely Venkis or Ramses. Yeah, put breaks or, on and off. Yeah, yeah, yeah breaks. Yeah. I had some health mm-hmm. issues. Yeah. But I feel I feel like every time you came back to set, you were very happy to yes. get back into some of these. Right? Yes. So that's one that's thing. Nice. This is one set and one character that I have absolutely enjoyed to the bits. Like I cannot tell you the energy that I get and and that I have, and I feel like it just kind of um, spreads. You know that energy on the set is something that I've not seen anywhere so far. So apart from the both of you, who are the other actors that Are a larger part during shoot. That I mean, the kid. That take was so yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. He. I don't. There's not a single. There's not one retake I can think of. Because of because of him. We would That's forget great. lines. You know. We would forget lines. Oh, we would mess up. Yeah. In fact, there, there's a sequence where uh, he's asleep and both of us are talking and 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 I say something and she reacts loudly and he wakes up. Yeah. Yeah. But between takes. for set up or whatever mm-hmm. we're taking time mm-hmm. and he's always lying there with his eyes closed uh-huh. and he could have very easily fallen asleep uh-huh. for a child of that age right. but he was there but was. as soon as they call action and mm-hmm. as soon as it's his cue to wake up bang on nice so the one i think i feel like there's one time where he messed a line up we're all like did how you could you yeah, what how yeah. could you <laughs> did you did you mess up a line and, and and he was like is like is it that <laughs> wrong we all put him on the spot we're like Oh my Finally, god. Finally, one adorable. mistake yeah. with this kid. True, true. But he's adorable and he is uh, so well prepped. Uh, knows all his lines, knows all his beats, knows Very all his hard-working, disciplined. Hard-working, such a good kid. Yeah. So loved I love the experience of working with him. But I th- I think the entire cast uh, true. as in uh, not just uh, the uh, you know the home situation like even the bank I the think bank like yeah. Every sing- single uh, cast member there. I feel like we all almost live like that is a workplace and we all have roles to play this gentleman who plays the security guard every single day of shoot he's already there mm-hmm. in uniform mm-hmm. and when i'm walking in he he will salute me mm-hmm. and we have so many interactions in the film and i feel like in the most distant shot where he's there in the background mm-hmm. he's still standing there like and you know he's amazing and uh, every other character in in the bank for me and we almost operated in that same manner some uh-huh. 45 days we shoot in the bank sir so every day at 6 pm when they call pack up We'll all leave the bank together. <laughs> so it's like so, you know, you're like almost bank employees like all that. exactly so getting like, out of the like, same like, place. Like a, a, a factory, the, the, the <laughs> bell or whatever rings and everybody uh-huh. exists together. We'll all pour out of the bank like that. I, I've never had these kind of experiences. So I remember there was a day when uh, I think we finished early, and all the bank. Uh, Actors, you, know. <laughs> you were going to say all the our we bank employees. <laughs> oh no, that's <laughs> what was going to come so, out of so, your mouth. So they all kind of uh, got into regular clothes, and uh. they all want to take photos and uh. stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wow, <laughs> like this is all of you look like because they, when when in period attire and you know like uh, work clothes of that time, they're all very like formal looking mm. and you know, like hair done up and you know. Correct. correct. And then now they're like cool, young, colorful, Peppy. hair open, and all this stuff. And I was like, "Wow! Like I can't imagine all of you like all of these guys yeah, like beautiful." See, like when as soon as I heard from actually first from Vinky about what Lucky Bus could work, right? Like just the fascination of taking money from a bank and just going away was just a happy <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> Big spoiler, <right? laughs> no, no. I mean that's what I like. Just bank money. Sure. And I always wanted to loot a bank, <laughs> like in my life. And you th- like what is that energy? Like, some, there's a writer called Sridhar Raghavan who's a friend of mine. He said every time you can take money from somewhere, some inst- it'll be a blockbuster because all of us want to do it. Because we're conditioned to. Uh, it, are we allowed to reveal this? Oh no! So it's not. <laughs> like, Then we'll chop it in. Uh, okay. Vinky will take whichever piece he wants. <laughs> sure. Okay. Huh. They'll pull I, piece out. I think our conditioning, it. right? Huh? Like our conditioning is, is so okay. much. to behave and do the right thing and and follow the rules and the law 
and abide by it and, yeah. and not really stir up a, any kind of uh, honestness uh -huh. so when we see films where you or when i see true crime uh, dramas of any 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 type you're always wondering how can you do that mm. you know wow like it really takes some guts or like it really takes uh, sort of some dismissing of of your integrity or your understanding of right and wrong to go and do this mm. you know and i think that's what we find kind of heroic hero like, yeah. wow this this takes another kind of guts this guts takes another kind of like bravery to do this because the rest of us are so uh, boxed by 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 conditioning yeah so I, i think that's the fascination okay when when i meant bank and money i actually was talking about nagavamsi <laughs> 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 so vamsi is right uh, he's a he's a dear friend i worked on with bimal like i did a film sure. yeah. with sitara and he is so different from all the producers you normally see mm -hmm. in a classical sense for sure uh, so he had something which now became very viral and popular i have to talk about it sure he said day one is going to be 100 crores and that's how he's beginning his his campaign for this film <laughs> just to just to uh, make it clear uh, uh. in 13 years of my career almost 40 films i still uh. have not hit 100 crores <laughs> so if this does 100 crores day one i will be the happiest <laughs> <laughs> i will probably be like vamsi <laughs> I love a frame picture of you in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> But tell me how is it with Stara with Bamsi Chinma were all of you know uh, of them. no they've been lovely and mm -hmm. they've been very supportive of the film but I remember there was one I feel like we were <laughs> maybe 30 40% 30% of the film and Bamsi is very confused so he he's a he's he's not the kind of producer that's like meddlesome like he doesn't mm -hmm. overly interfere yeah. but he does you know visit from time to time to sort of show his presence and make sure like he, you know you know that he's around <laughs> and that's good i think that's healthy as producers if you're there every day you know like a lot of producers sit there from all day to uh -huh. seem like you know the clock is ticking uh -huh. and, you know like uh, there's a nervous energy right. because so they like, like uh, if we go over uh -huh. but he doesn't do that like he comes from time to time so one day he wanted to meet me and he's like sir is everything going as do you think it's going okay because you know this is not a typical uh masi commercial film Correct. with fight and dance and, mm. and songs and all the stuff but we're still going uh, you know uh, this many days <laughs> we're still shooting so much you sure it's okay and i was like i was like obviously this is not a type of film that even i've attempted mm. nor is venki and i think uh, i've done one heist film before and when you do any shit a real heist film we'll uh, just block this and We we'll just beep it. They think it's something wrong, yeah. bad. We're talking. <laughs> But I'm saying, I'm saying, okay. Certain genres of film uh -huh. need uh, a certain amount of uh, shots and angles and stuff to either increase pace, mm. decrease it, slow it down, speed it up how you want in edit. Yeah. So we do need a number of shots, uh, especially in certain sequences. Mm. So I was like, I I do understand what Venki is. There's no wasted. Uh -huh. We are not traffic. Uh, <laughs> we're not just blowing up. No, we're not. We're not. Uh -huh. So he's like. Okay sir you you're sure I said yeah, I'm sure okay sir then beyond that there's no uh, conversation conversation this about this which oh. I liked because nice. he was trying to understand I, th I think as a producer he's seeing us shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and he's like this is just some <laughs> okay bank okay you know house and there's some uh, done you know like we sh this should be a quick film <laughs> without so much effort on paper the idea of correct um. uh, yeah it's usually a, s a strange thing when we assume that if there's no song and dance or there's no ac big action sequence you feel like the film should get True. over fast because you can break down song in song mm. dance and fights yeah you can be like one song four days yeah. this song five days yeah. this fight 12 days whatever what is correct there is a calculation but for drama you don't know how to drama, break it drama you don't right. know how to do it i, I think we're facing the same we're facing this with kanta <laughs> we're like huh. oh we this is how long it takes okay 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 no problem <laughs> so now this film is out on the 31st of october yeah. and it's out across india in five languages yeah sure. now What is what is your expectations of each? I I'm beyond. I think a I I've not th these past two years have been the slowest in my career in a very long time. Hey, I usually have. Stop, stop seriously, seriously, that, seriously that. I usually do at least three films. If you see my contemporaries in Malayalam, they're all at like five films, six films. My dad is at five, six films. <laughs> so when I'm like one film a year for two years, huh. uh, it's almost unprecedented. Like there's no. So here, but in Telugu, they think you're an actor who does films very fast in Telugu. I need to speed things up <laughs> <laughs> because I signed the <coughs> thinking it's a three four month film. Uh -huh. It's taken a, a year. A year. So uh, I think for me the joy, the excitement is the fact that uh, I am coming out with the film after fourteen months. So and irrespective of 
how it fares in each of the languages. I think we've made a good film. Nice. Uh, and I think the subject is very Indian, mm. very universal in that. I think 80% of India is either a Bhaskar or knows a Bhaskar or relates or connects to a Bhaskar. I think for me, when I first heard the script, what I connected with it, I was like, I was like if, if some decent percentage of the audience walks out of the cinema hall at the end of the film feeling like they are Bhaskar in some mm. way, we have a winner. You have a winner. Yes. So Dil, who's a, who's a Bhaskar in your life? Or have think, you seen Bhaskars around? What's I think the, we all know Bhaskars in our lives, in, in, in some form or the other. In, like, like my dad is some five siblings, my mum is some three siblings, and obviously their kids, their extended families, and, and there's always been only one movie star. I'm the second in that sense. And so all of growing up, we've always seen different members of the family uh, struggling in some form or the other, especially financially. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I think that is all of Bhaskar's story. Right? He's, every month I feel like he's a little in a negative balance. Mm -hmm. Like he'll That's make slight, he'll yeah, make yeah. X, but his expenses every month are X plus so plus much, it, yeah. uh, and that's a struggle. And I feel like so much, so much of our country historically has always been like that. I think I think it's been a lot better of mm -hmm. late uh, since liberalisation in the past twenty years or whatever. But there are still people that that, that struggle uh, on yeah. a on a month on month basis. Yeah. So, which is which is what I think I love most about the film. About the film. Tell me, who are Baskers in your life? Have you seen yeah. Baskers around you? Uh, I think I've grown up in a very normal government services. Uh, my dad was in the army. And um, uh, I think even though you get to have a very comfortable life, I do remember having the best travel experiences and memories in our Maruti, the four of us just going in, traveling. And, which is uh, you know, so which relevant is, to yeah, it is. So, you know, I feel like it's, I, I have all of those memories etched in my mind. Like, I, I can still, you know, uh, remember it so clearly about all of those things growing up in that space wherein uh, my mom would have to bargain with the sabziwala also on how it is. But it's a typical, you know, like middle class space. That's what I've grown in, where education is given the most importance, um, you know, focusing on things that will probably stand you long term. I remember my, I would be buying my books and they'd be saved and passed on to my brother because we won't be buying the other ones. We'd be like, why, why, why it if he's going to go into the next, uh, you know, like this, that's literally. It happened with me too, just that I didn't use the book, so I just <laughs> it went to my sister yeah. straight. Sister they were just, books, they're so. fresh books. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what, I, and I remember my mom buying a little size, one size extra, like for us, for our school uniforms, knowing that we're going to fit into it probably next year as well, it's going to go in. So, you know, those small, small things that work in, and I've, I've grown up with that thing. So I know those things and how, how the smallest of things make so much of an impact in, in a normal government services or a middle class family. And I think that is what I could relate to the most when I was listening, when I'm shooting, when we are all hearing those scenes. Um, it's so relatable because I have grown up with those things. And it just felt so nice knowing that it's on screen because I could relate to that and be like, you know, we also do this. Do you remember this in the Maruti or stuff like that? So it's it's so beautiful to have this story. And I think this is one of the reasons why this film is so special to me. So I have to tell you something about army kids. I know you're an army kid mm -hmm. and you lived in different places yes. in the country. So like they always used to have a sense saying, okay, you guys are civilians, we're army kids. They, <laughs> they were like, like treat us different. Is that, is that how you grew up too? I mean, it's saying, just... You guys are civilians. I'm like, what does that even mean? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we're here yeah. protecting you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, how, yes, Is that yes. the sense that you... Because, you know, we, we, we like to call ourselves, or most of us, I remember it's army brats. Brat is not just a brat. It's like born, raised and transferred. So you literally... Oh, okay, wow, okay. Yeah, what is that? I mean, because <laughs> you were born and you were raised in a certain way and you keep getting transferred. I mean, because of your dad's job. So you are not That's just born in one place and you're not just raised in one place, but you're transferred in so many places across India that you kind of learn even, and I'm a very shy kid. Growing up, I was extremely shy and an introverted kid. It took me so much of time to get used to knowing that it's going to be a new school after two years, a new house, a new place. The moment I get used to the place, it's going to be a different place altogether. So, you know, I think I take pride in the fact that uh, it, it kind of forces you to get out of your shell and, and learn to be on your own because uh, every two years is going to be a new place altogether. Well, so I'm saying so class one to ten you shifted like... I think I shifted what like five schools, five, six schools? That's crazy. Insane. It is. That's crazy. It is. But also, huh? just imagine myself, like the fact that there's certain security we all face, mm -hmm. that we all enjoy, uh, especially like south of India, we're pretty far away from the borders. Mm -hmm. 
and all of our army personnel that is there protecting us imagine the stress their families go through oh yeah you know imagine the fears they live with uh, it, it can't be easy it can't there's yeah. a different and, and we just take it for granted f- fully so so which is so i think it's fully justified if they when call they, civilians <laughs> civilians in their discussion yeah and you, also you i guys think you deserve to say whatever you want yeah, i i remember most of my childhood my dad was not even with us so uh, i i remember having an evening 5 o'clock call i know that call is going to be from a dad and it's just going to be like a 15 minute call how are you how's everything how's your school all good all good um, with my mom with my brother and me that's it and every day exactly at that but you would all wait for that call yes so we just go that's go amazing. running and like today i'll pick that's a call amazing. you know so it's it's those memories and and i i truly am so grateful for all of that so your sense of discipline all that comes from comes you? from that yeah absolutely my parents so she's like punctual on set on never, time on. N- never late even a single day yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, as in, I feel like she calculates for traffic. She calculates Everything. for RFC. She calculates <laughs> <It's> <laughs> for everything. whichever location that she's there. Yeah. Where did you all shoot most of this film? I knew a lot of it was set and set Almost up. Almost entirely on sets in aluminum factory. Yes. Okay. Uh, which felt like home in some way because with the mosquitoes and yeah, everything. But, else. but we were going there every day. There's a routine <laughs> yeah. to to it, which which yeah. is so rare in what we do. Yeah. Yeah. True. To have a routine, routine to going to one place. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. That I totally understand. True. Yeah. yeah. So tell me, what what do you want? people to take back from sumati once they watch this film i think i want them to take back a part of themselves because i can guarantee you when you watch this film and when you watch sumati living her life i think that every mother every wife every daughter the sacrifices the um uh, you know the a lot of compromises sacrifices a lot of giving up on your own goals to be able to live and that's not in a way where in you're saying that i'm sacrificing you want to do it you willingly take that decision mm. and and the courage and so much of passion and um the strength i think i think sumati is the definition of every Quite woman yeah. every woman <coughs> every woman and that is what she stands for and i think she holds her ground throughout in the entire film with every choice and decision that she's made and i love that about her Nice. There's a lot of grace and dignity. It is. Yes, she has that. Okay, now if I say take home, I'm saying you've always picked stories that are unique. Mm-hmm. Uh, you they've always created some kind of thought when you get out of the, of the cinema. What would this have? What is what is what do you think we would have? But, but I I I feel like you've done the same. Mm-hmm. I, I think uh, the one thing you me I'm sure even Minakshi connects like resonates with is the fact that uh, the stories are bigger than us. The stories are larger than us. The stories will outlive us. Uh, and i think what we're constantly seeking is to find uh, those films and those stories and and to to create that cinema that is going to outlive us uh, you know uh, our grandkids hopefully can be proud of the choices that we made today yeah at at the age that we're at true um but and this is all i love to do i feel like i love to hear uh, as many stories as i can and find the most authentic original ones in that and and i put everything into it to kind of tell that story but also when when and it's it's so it's not quantifiable the kind of audiences that connect to cinema true it you, i cannot say we're making this film just for a telugu audience mm. there have been films of mine that have resonated with somebody in turkey or somebody in bangladesh or somebody in japan i don't know like i don't know that somebody like you on the street <laughs> i i i just saying i've grown no? up i've grown up by <laughs> you don't do that <laughs> i don't like disrupting people in general <laughs> i don't i don't i'm not obnoxious <laughs> but uh, yeah and the, the the beauty of cinema is i feel like it can transcend borders it can transcend language it can transcend back in time time yeah. ages uh, so I, i feel like if there is something there's so much of just human drama in this film Uh, and i feel like if that connects and resonates with people and they make it their own in some way and i feel like if it's a world that they want to keep revisiting then we've done something right yeah see, see like every time i not, not even like even before way before i was an actor right every time i saw something in period mm-hmm. i always used to get excited that cinema is probably the only place you can recreate a time that sure. you've never lived in yeah. sure i just feel like you've recreated that time like a full timeline now <laughs> you have from 20s 30s 40s 50s 60s you're going across actually yeah, yeah. you know so i've kind of sat down <laughs> at some point and yeah. like um, sort of try to try to analyze this <laughs> and there was a time in maybe the late 80s or early 90s when mm. uh, my dad did some of these sort of epic uh, period dramas in malayalam 
talking of our folklore and stuff like mm-hmm. that. <coughs> and that time also those are big budget films. Right. And uh, but still they could kind of afford to make those films. Mm-hmm. Then we went to the 90s where social became more not even social. I feel like the business changed in, in such a way. This is pre-satellite. Mm-hmm. Uh, where somewhere the costing was not working out. Mm-hmm. So you were then uh, devoid or sort of deprived of anything period or anything large scale right for almost a decade yeah. and i was like these are going to be big ambitious mm-hmm. uh, where you need a producer of that courage to kind of recreate Mount something like great recreate yeah. so uh, when i became an actor i never imagined that i could ever be part of nice. a large scale period drama or a period film i think it's your childhood manifestation dude Somewhere. that just made so, you this so when uh-huh. a mahanati came my way uh-huh. i was like wow like I felt like a kid going to Disneyland for the first time. I I didn't yes. think this would ever happen for me. Uh, yes. Every day of that set, like you know, we met Shivam just now, but like every day that set, I'd be like, I'm like this, <laughs> yes. and I feel like that's never left me. So like, uh-huh. anytime you think uh, you can sort of bankroll a period film with me, and if I can make that happen. maybe i'm doing something of some service to my my younger self i don't know what it is <laughs> but it gives me so much joy and sort of confidence that like hey this film is still bankable even though we're mm. putting in this kind of money and effort into creating this era all over again such an honest nice guy no this guy i know i know <laughs> no i like this is like totally true like when i wanted to start my career back as a producer and said okay how do i make it mm. he is probably is the only guy and i'm and i'm i'm saying it with such joy and i don't think i've said this to you ever i feel lucky and blessed that this guy is the hero of, of the movie that i'm making wow really That's it's a, such a, a big it's thing. such a joy man to work with you the fact that the ethic of storytelling that you have the way you sit with your character and just be that person True. it's very very hard in today's time where somebody holds that ethic to stories But also speaking of you know, luck and lucky basket, how fortunate are we, you and me? You are some third generation. I'm a second generation actor and producer, for that matter. To find a story uh, and and then be able to put that together and 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 make cinema out of it. True. We could be um, two kids or some children playing some kind of storytelling uh, role play that that children do. but we get to do it for real uh, at large scale with you know big money being spent where people also have conviction that we can do this we can pull this off so you and me coming together after i don't know how many decades of friendship <laughs> and we're creating something together i think that in itself is such a blessing so all that stuff next but <laughs> this is the amazing team of lucky basker vinky is not around but i'll get him also in front of the camera for you guys very soon but all the best to you thank you, you too thank and you. i think this is going to be an amazing 31st october <laughs> for you guys thank you so i'm saying all the luck of lucky basket should be <laughs> with you guys thank you well. and yes. like all of telugu cinema is going to root for you and when telugu cinema roots the whole country hears it oh, yes. and that's how <laughs> things roll here oh, yes. so all the best to you dq and all Thanks. the best thank to you, you. Thank meenakshi you. thank you thank you thank you chief lucky basket on the 31st of october <laughs>